Welcome back everybody. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be reliving the journey I took creating my own back garden recording studio. Okay, so coming into this project, I'd already created my own recording studio by converting a double garage in my old house. Now I went completely overboard. This was a bit of a childhood dream studio with a separate control room and also a separate live room. And I made that live room a room within a room to try and keep the noise down so that I could record live drums and loud guitar amps. During the conversion of that double garage, I undertook a lot of research on acoustics, soundproofing and DIY. I made loads of mistakes along the way and I was excited about testing my skills and knowledge by building a brand new back garden studio when I moved house. Next up, I entered into the planning stage. I really enjoyed this bit. My constraints were the space in the back garden and also my budget. I wanted to try and create the biggest space I could possibly get with the budget and space that I had in the back garden. Now my previous studio was constructed from block work that was already existing and that has really good sound attenuation properties. But for this project, I just didn't have the skill level or the budget to build my studio out of concrete blocks. I asked a few builder friends and they said the price of OSB board has shot up. So doing a scratch build from timber and OSB was probably gonna be quite expensive. And they suggested that the best option would be to go for a prefabricated log cabin and then I could work from there, skin out the interior and soundproof that once it was built. After doing a bit of hunting around on the internet, I found a really good single garage log cabin. I could just block up the end where the garage doors were and put a bit of OSB board to reinforce that. Then I could replace the windows and doors that came with the kit with really good quality double glaze units. I did a bit of research with the local planning department just to check that what I had in mind would be okay. And then it was a case of planning out the next stage, which was laying down the concrete block. The site for the studio was grass. There was a little bit of pre-existing concrete where the previous owner wanted to put a hot tub, but that was nowhere near big enough for the studio to fit. So I would need to put down some hardcore and some concrete I'd never laid a concrete block before, so I did a fair bit of research, checked out a few YouTube videos, and also asked a few of my builder mates. I measured out the size of the concrete block so that it was a foot bigger all the way around than the footprint of the log cabin that was gonna be arriving. And then it was time to book the digger. <laughs> Started digging that out, and that was really good fun for about a quarter of an hour. <laughs> and then the novelty of wheelbarrowing all of that grass and earth out to the skip soon wore off. I calculated the rough volume of the earth I was gonna be removing with an online calculator, and then I booked an appropriate size skip to hopefully take all that away. Now this was pretty hard work and it took ages to get down to the relative depth. Next up, I made a rectangular frame out of wood. This would house the concrete and this took me ages to get this the right shape and the right size and to get it level all the way around. Every time I was tempted to bodge it, I made sure I went back and redid it because everything was riding on this concrete block being flat and level and also being strong and true. Now I was pretty nervous about laying this concrete block. It was a fair amount of money and I had in my mind that if it ended up like the Himalayas, I was gonna have to do the phone call of shame to somebody to come and break it all apart and start again and that would add loads more money to the end bill. Next up, I ordered some Type 2 Hardcore. Again, I used an online calculator to work out how much I'd need. I went for 100 mil depth and I compacted that down so it was nice and flat all the way round. Then I ordered up the concrete. Again, I used an online calculator to work out the volume. I went for 150 millimeters thick all the way round. And I also went for a pre-mix lorry to deliver that. On the day of the pour, I put in two layers of thick damp-proof membrane this laid on top of the hardcore and the concrete would go on top of that. Got loads of people to help, loads of barrows, loads of protective gear. This is pretty nasty stuff, the old concrete. And we started barrowing it through, getting it down as quickly as possible. Only had about two hours to get it all in. 
It was just a case of smoothing it off on the top with a bit of two by four that laid across that frame that hopefully remained flat. And then once all the concrete was in, I kept on working the concrete, used a couple of different floats, and much to my surprise, managed to get a pretty even finish all the way across. I tried to keep the concrete damp for a few days so it didn't dry out too quickly. And once it was dry, I had a nice little pad to practice my freestyle skateboarding. Log cabin arrival day was pretty exciting. It arrived as a big flat pack unit and I stuck it in the driveway. The log cabin goes together pretty much like a Lego set. And the first stage is to get the first layer completely straight. And again, this took me ages. Once I got it in, I bolted it all down to the concrete. And then the log cabin went up pretty quickly, just placing one log on top of the other as per the instructions and knocking it in. Now this only took a couple of days to get it all together and to get the roof on. And once I had, I put a little bit of that damp proof membrane over the top just to keep the rain off. Next up, I sealed all around the ends of the cabin with silicon sealant as directed in the instructions and then protected all of the wood from the elements by painting it with classic fence paint. I got hold of some good quality secondhand double glazed patio doors off of Facebook Marketplace and then I framed those and put those in. This log cabin came with a standard felt roof and I flogged this on Facebook Marketplace and put the money towards getting a rubber roof as an upgrade. The rubber membrane arrived and it was reassuringly heavy. I got my mate Callum to help me up onto the roof and once I'd laid it out, I used the adhesive that was included to stick it to the roof. Now this type of rubber roof membrane lasts about 40 to 50 years. So I felt that was a pretty good choice of upgrade as it regularly rains sideways here in Cornwall. So now we could finally get onto the fun part, which was soundproofing the interior. First job was to stick in a breather membrane all the way round. In my previous studio, I used Rockwall Sound Slab for soundproofing and it worked a treat. So I went with the same this time and I framed out the interior with 120 mil timber this would add a bit more structural rigidity and also provide a place and an air gap for the 100 mil rock wall to sit in. Once I'd framed out the interior, I put in the electric cables. I went for one ring main and I learned from my previous studio that the more plug sockets, the better. So I went a little bit overkill with all of the plug socket locations. I also sent off lots of spurs to various lighting locations and also a separate mains lead to power the underfloor heating. I calculated the amount of rock wall that I'd need and when it arrived, <laughs> it looked a little bit overkill, but I knew from my previous studio that it would all go in somewhere. Once all the rock wall was in, I fitted OSB board. This would make fitting the heavy acoustic plasterboard a lot easier. And it also meant that I could stick shelves and anything that I wanted to fix to the walls anywhere in the studio without worrying about the fixing. I used acoustic plasterboard and this in tandem with the rock wall would provide most of the sound attenuation. Once it was fitted, I jointed all of the plasterboard with jointing compound and also tape. And once all that plasterboard was jointed, it was just a case of sanding it off to get a nice finish. Prior to fitting the laminate flooring, I painted all the walls with a couple of coats of emulsion. For the floor, I put in another two layers of damp proof membrane and then laid in a hundred mils worth of Celotex. On top of that went 22 mil chipboard floorboards, then some good quality orange laminate underlay. I got the underfloor heating kit and laid it out where I wanted it to be. I kept it away from where the guitar storage rack would be, just so the guitars didn't get any direct heat on them. I picked a laminate floor type that would work with underfloor heating. And once that underfloor heating was all laid out, I wired it up and then put the laminate on top. And then once that laminate flooring was in, it started to look like a room. I had a tried and tested desk setup and also storage setup in my previous studio. And I'd measured that before I moved. So I just implemented that same design. I knew the height and the dimensions that I like to work with. And I knew that all my kit would fit on top of that. I also used the roof structure in the middle to create another place for some more storage. And I also put in a little room divider where I could draw curtains because my idea with this was to have a modular design where I could podcast in one side and record in the other. And I could also take out some of the reverberation of that bigger room 
and reduce it by putting curtains across in the middle. Now, the only professional tradesman I went with was an electrician. They put in the consumer box, made sure that everything was safe and that everything I'd wired in had been done correctly. I went with various LED lights or switchable from my iPhone app. The electrician also led in the main power cable from the house. This went into my consumer board in the house on a separate feed and I also got an extra power outlet put on the outside of the shed so that I could power stuff in the garden. To make the room sound nice inside, I fitted the classic studio rug. I also made a few frames out of wood and filled those with rock wool just to reduce the reverb levels. I made a couple of base bins in the corners where my monitors would be, again with rock wool and a little bit of fabric on the outside. And then I fitted 100 mil of acoustic foam behind my monitoring station just to keep all the frequencies and reverb as flat as possible. I made a separate video on my process of building a skateboard rack. I fitted that in and put all my skateboards there so that I could do my skateboarding podcast videos. I also gave my music desk a bit of a pool skating flavour. Again, I made a separate video on that process, so you might want to check that out. That OSB board backing came in handy because I could put up guitar hangers anywhere that I wanted. And I could also anchor any of the display cabinets and shelves that I put in. And that was it, the studio was fully finished and ready to work in. It's been going great guns for the past two years. I've got no damp issues, everything's still standing and is still dry. I've made a couple of little tweaks as I've gone, but nothing too major. I got back into my climbing recently, so I put up a little place where I could train my grip. It's really nice and quiet inside. I don't make any crazy noise in it because I've got electronic drums and I tend to use amp modeling software for recording. I do mic up the amp every now and then, but the sound attenuation I've got in place is more than enough to keep the neighbors happy. But the main thing is it's really nice and quiet in here if I wanna do some podcasting or record some acoustic guitars and the EQ is pretty flat with not too much reverb. The underfloor heating is on a thermostat and it keeps the temperature nice and even throughout the winter months. I rigged up some cheap foil insulation blinds that can roll up and when they roll down they reflect all of the sunlight and they stop it getting hot in the studio. The rock wall insulation and the plasterboard stops any of that sun from the outside heat in the room and it remains pretty cool even when it's hot outside. Well that's it for this video. If you have any questions on any aspect of this project then please do leave them in the comments below. Obviously, I'm not a trained professional, but we live in an age where you can get the information pretty readily. I looked at all the YouTube videos done by professionals, and I also asked for advice from all of my tradesmen friends. Now, I'm sure one question you might be thinking is how much did the studio build cost? And I think it's a little bit irrelevant due to the timing of when I built this and the way that the economy has moved on since I built it. I went for a budget of about 10,000 pounds, and I didn't really keep track. I'm sure I went over it because all those little trips to the local DIY shop for that extra box of screws soon adds up. But I reckon if you were to build it now, it would be a whole lot more. Anyway, enough of my yakking. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I make new videos every week. As ever, my name's been John Bishop, and I'll see you next time.